go back into my car, or go back and send a text to the Rosh Hashanah that everybody's sitting and learning, I don't want to come and stare that. But, Komasha Balavayis Oymer Asay, Chutz Mitzay. So, if you want to tell me to leave that much, I don't have to. I'm just speaking smart. You're going to have to excuse my literature pronunciation, but uh, I hope we'll get Zachanetza. The Rambam, in the second paragraph of the Shuva, starts off, Ezoi Tshuva Gemura. What is considered complete Tshuva? So, the Rambam says, Sheboli Yodei Dover Sheovar Boi. An opportunity presents itself to do an Avera, which the person had previously done. The F should be Yodei Lasses. He's able to do it. He has the Cheshek to do it. Upirish Veloy also. And he separated himself from the Avera and didn't do the Avera. Mipnei HaTshuva. For one reason only. Because he did Tshuva. He became a Baal Tshuva in that Avera. Loi meyira, veloi me kishlon koyach. Not because he was afraid that somebody might see, and not because he didn't have the courage to do it. For no other reason than the tshuva itself is stopping him from doing that there. So the Rambam, that's a tshuva gemur. We have to stop and think. <coughs> and I'm talking to myself and. I figured I would just share things that I had written down from previous years for myself. Can we say from last Yom Kippur to this Yom Kippur that the things that we did tshuva on last year fit into what the Rambam says? Ezoyu tshuva gemura, that from last year Yom Kippur we weren't nichshul in any of those averes whatsoever. I think for the Hamoin Am, for most people, it's hard to say that. The Teva is that after Yom Kippur goes by, maybe we're on a high, till after Sukkot, till after Shana Rava. And after that, after Yom Tov is over, and we're back to the grind, back to our everyday lives, and then things slip right back down to where we were before. So what's the Eitzah to hold on to a certain degree to the tshuva that we're going to come to with Hashem and Yom Kippur? The Ebesh says to Klai Yisrael, I'm going to take you to task. If a person says, I don't have many affairs, I don't got a problem. So the Ebesh for that alone, I'm going to take a person and be done him, and he's going to get an Oynish for that itself. The denying and the not recognizing that we have a virus, that's the first problem. The famous Shuva, somebody once wrote the Rambam, he says, I can't come and say all the al-chets in the list of al-chets that we say in Yom Kippur. Most of them don't apply to me. So I feel like it's, it's worse. I'm coming there in front of Akash Baruch I'm saying, al-chets shatatosi, l'fanachat this, al-chets shatatosi, that. I didn't do those al-chets. So, so, I'm lying. I knew Kippur in front of Akash Baruch. So the Raman wrote him a few things back. Raman wrote him. First of all, we say to Losh Rab, Al Chet Shachatonu, Al Shamnu, Bogadnu, Losh Rabin. So it's for everybody. Between the whole crowd, between the whole Klai Yisrael, unfortunately, there are people that were over all the Averis in the list. Secondly, the Raman writes him that it's not just what was done in this guild. It's what was done in previous Gilgul. And that, you have no clue what was done in previous Gilgul. But lastly, and most importantly, the Raman writes him, Dos Alei, that itself, that you say that you weren't Nishra at all in Avak, in even something that has any semblance of the Aver, that's the biggest problem. To say that this is not Megea me at all. Even if the Mais Aver itself may not be Megea, but Abizrayu, the peripheral of the Avera, definitely has a shyness. And the Rabbi writes to him that that's your biggest problem. So the step one would be to recognize 
that we have a base. There's an Rechaim HaKodesh, the Parsh Nitzov, who says a beautiful chat in the few psukim in Parsh Nitzov with deal with Shuvah. Pesach says, V'shavta ad Hashem alekecho v'shamata v'koylo. Klai Yisrael will come to the level, to the Madrege. V'shavta ad Hashem alekecho. They'll return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. V'shamata v'koylo. They'll listen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu's voice. K'choy Hashem alekecho v'shamata v'koylo. Everything that I'm telling you to do. Then the Pesach says, V'shav Hashem alekecho shvuscha v'rich ha'mecho. Will gather in all of Achelo Kobes Yisrael that have been exiled. Then the passage continues a few seconds later. Umol Hashem Alekecha as Lavavcha ve as Lavav Zarech. Hakosh Baruch Hu, just like there's a bris mila for a baby on the goof, there will be a, a mila on our lay. There's something called Orlas Halei that is a pagam. It's a problem. We have an Orla Saleh. We don't cut it off with a knife. But we need to get rid of the Orla Saleh. <coughs> so the Pesach says, HaKadosh Baruch will help us with that. Umol HaShem HaLikecha Slavavcha Le'ahavu HaShem HaLikecha Asks the Orachayim. If the Pesach already said, V'shavta Ad HaShem HaLikecha V'shamata V'koyloi That means we're already doing a tshuva. If we're already doing a tshuva, then why do we need the next Pesach? Umol HaShem HaLikecha Slavavcha V'eslavav Zarech And then there's a third Pesach. Again, it sounds like a, a, a repetitious. It sounds like a repeat of what the Pazit just said. Why are the three Psukim seemingly saying the same thing? So, the Pazit is telling me three parts that a person has to do tshuva. He says, the first Pazit. <coughs> Is talking about Eisekatayr. Eisekatayr, how much a person sat and learned, how many hours a day he has available to put into Eisekatayr, to put into sitting and learning, and how many he actually did. So the Pesach says on that, Vishavto. When it comes to Eisekatayr, the person will do a tshuva. In that area, he'll be putting in the time that he's able to in Eisek HaTayra. That's called the Shonata B'Koyla. Shehu Talmud Tayra is of the Archai. And to that, the Pesach says, V'shov Hashem Alekecha Shfuscha HaKadosh Baruch Hu V'shov Ekibetzcha Mikola Amin. Because of the mitzvah of Talmud Tayra, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bring us the Geul. Why is that? Says The Pesach says, Alma of the Ha'aretz, the Pesach in Yirmiya. Alma of the Ha'aretz. Why was there a Chorbin? And why did Klai Yisrael go to Golos? Al Ozvam es Teirasi. Because we forsook the Torah. We left the Torah. So if we will come back to the Torah, so then that will be cause. V'shovi ki betzchum ekol ha'amim. V'akash Baruch will gather us back together again. That's the first thing the Pesach says. The next thing, the Pesach continues and says, Umol Hashem alikecha, aslobov chavez lobav zarecha. Zokta Archaim, that's referring to Mitzvah's Loisa says that Klai Yisrael was Oyu. What you're not supposed to do. And we went ahead and did it anyway. To that, it applies the words of Mola Hashem Alekechas Lubavcha. He says, Orla Saleiv gets a person to do what he's not supposed to do. That comes from Orla Saleiv. Asois Resha, Va'ahavas Resha, Zokta Archaim. That comes from Orla Saleiv. So for that we need Akash Barku's help to see Atta Dishmaya, Umol Hashem Alekechas Lavavcha, Ves Lavazara. Akash Barku will help us get rid of the Oral Saleh from ourselves, from our children. Laahavas Hashem Alekechas Lavavcha, Lavavcha, Lavavcha. And that will keep us away from falling back into Mitzvah's Loisesses. And then the third person, Vatal Soshu, Vishamata Bakar Hashem, Vasisa is called Mitzvah Yisov, Sokta Rachai Makadish, that's going on Kiyu Mitzvah Saseh. That's going on Mitzvah Saseh after a person sat and learned. And after he stayed away from the Sur Meirah, after he stayed away from the Lois Saseh, then he still has to do, obviously, the Mitzvah Saseh, putting out tefillin, putting out tzitzit. The Mitzvah Saseh that a person is doing every day. That's what Tososhu Basi says called Mitzvah Saseh. So, we all have to make a Cheshvan and Nefesh 
in these three areas, in Eisek in Moisases, in Kiyom and everybody can feed their own Cheshbon and Efesh that they make. Go into Yom Kippur and undertake a Kabbalah. The question is, <coughs> even after we realize in what areas we may have slipped and what areas we can improve, the Teva for the person is, Teva, especially younger people, the Teva is that it comes in Kippur and you want to be able to cobble everything. Every one of the Alchates, you want to be able to cobble to be a Tzad and Gomer. And the problem, obviously, that we all know, the problem with that is Tafasta Maruba Loi Tafasta. If you're going to try and become a tzaddik overnight in every area of all the archaics and, and everything I'm going to be a tzaddik gomer, then it comes Motsi Yom Kippur, it comes two days later, and we're right back to where we started. Because it's impossible. It's impossible to undertake to be a tzaddik in everything. Yom Kippur, Kulei Hai Ulai. We sit and we dive in the whole day. Hopefully we can stay away from any, prob- any problems, any adverses. But that, that should, our lifestyle should be like that, it's impossible. It's impossible. So the Chavetz Chaim says, the Chavetz Chaim says the Eitzah is to take a little Kabul in every area that a person feels that he's lax in, in every area maybe that he is nichshul in, maybe a Lashon Hara I can fix up. You can't say, I'm never going to speak to anybody again, I'm never going to mention anybody ever again. It's impossible. So the Chavetz Chaim says the Eitzah is to do with an hour a day. There's one hour that I'm a Kabbal, a Shumayfin. Under no circumstances am I talking to anybody about anybody else. After that, throughout the day, I'm human, but one hour a day. And then you, it becomes, it becomes part of the person's lifestyle. If a person is not able to make it, to learn every day. So he makes a Kabbalah that coming from next year, after Yom Kippur, I'm going to half hour a day, half hour a day. He takes something which is able, which he knows that he's able to bite, bite-sized pieces, something that he knows he's able to be makabal, so if the Chavetz Chaim, then he has a very good chance of that lasting. And then you do that, year after year, so if the Chavetz Chaim is like taking out a mortgage, can't pay for the house all one shot, so you give a down payment, and you pay a little bit every month, <coughs> eventually the whole house becomes yours. Eventually. A person is able to stay away from everything that he doesn't want to be involved in, and he's able to do all the mitzvahs I say that he would like to do. So this is a beautiful motion. It says there was a chenvani fellow who ran a little store in a little shtetl, a little city, and <clears throat> once a year he would go into the big city to buy all the schayra. So he was in carpets. So he would go in to buy all of his carpets from the big store for the wholesaler, and then he would take it back and sell it. And business was not going well, and he fell behind in his payments. But the fellow, the wholesaler, knew him for years and years of doing business with him, and he gave him credit for another year. The fellow came back the next year, he said, please, it was a bad year, I, I needed the money for other things, do me a favor, give it to me on credit again. A few years went by and he kept giving him credit. Finally, after a few years of not paying anything, and he comes again, and he wants his big amount of carpets that he, take, that he takes every year. Finally, the wholesaler said to him, Rabid, I can't keep giving you credit. I'm sorry, I'd love to, but the, the business, the business, you can't just, it's not stuck here. I gotta, I gotta make some money here. So, the fellow starts crying to him. He says, listen, I have a whole family at home. I have a wife. I have children. I have to feed them. And this is not going well. And I did it for other expenses. And unexpected things came up. And I needed the money for that. Finally, he got the Rachmanis of the wholesaler. He got the Rachmanis of the Balabas. And he said, okay, sure. I'll give it to you one more time. So the Balabas goes into the back. And he tells his workers, favorite, we got to put together... The vehicle's here again as he is yearly. We gotta put together his stuff. We gotta put it onto the onto the truck. They said, What? Your vehicle's here again? When was the last time we paid you? So the Baba Boss said, uh, whatever, whatever, what's the difference? He hasn't paid in five years. Not only doesn't he pay, but even the things that we send him, he doesn't even pay for shipping. We have to pay him for everything. We're not doing it. Balabas says, No, come on. I told him I'm gonna do it. They said,
said, no, absolutely not. So even the Baal Abbas sometimes has got to come out to, Obama's got to come out to the Congress. If they say no, that's it. If they say no, it's not going to happen. So there's a, another merchant who's standing outside, and he's watching the proceedings. He calls over Rabbi Yankov to the side and says, listen, Rabbi Yankov, I see what's going on here. Instead of taking a whole truckload, as you usually do, take a very small amount that you do have money to pay for now. Whatever amount that is, just take a small amount. <coughs> and you'll be able to sell that off, and you'll be able to make a little bit of a profit on that. And then you'll come back. You'll come back a little more often. You'll turn a profit, and then you'll you'll come back. You'll buy a little more spare, and then you'll pay for that. But pay now, up front, whatever you're able to pay for. So if Yaakov goes over to the wholesaler, he says, okay, listen, I changed my mind. Would you give me, even though you're a wholesaler, and I'm buying very, very little quantity of carpets from you, but would you give it to me at the wholesale price? And I'll pay for it right now. So the Bible boss says, okay, you're going to pay for it right now? Fine. I know you've been doing business for years. We fell on hard times. If you'll pay for it right now, fine, I'll give it to you, even though I don't give anybody off the street for that price. I'm a wholesaler, not a retailer, but I'll give it to you. So he takes his little amount, and he is able to sell that. He's able to turn a little bit of a profit. He comes back and gets a little more spider and pays for it, COD, until he's able to pay off his favors and he's able to get back up on his ground. So that's what we have to do. To be makabal, everything is not going to work. And not only does it not work, even if the Abish did wanted to give it to us, there's a whole Pamalia Shomala going on up there. There's a Bezdin Shomala. Kabayoko, the Abish has to speak it over with. Hamayu Shomayla, whatever that means. But there's a Bez and Shomayla. And even if the Abish the wants to give us freebies, he wants to give us tshuva, Bez and says, Yej din, Yej dayin. You can't just forgive him. You can't just give him slicha, mechila. It doesn't work like that. And the Abish the Kavayochel, whatever that means, but Kavayochel, the Abish has to agree. So Zabta Chavazchan, the Eitz is, you strike a deal. You say, listen, I can't, I can't take on everything. I can't take on to be a tzad and get everything. It's impossible. But I am willing to be a a little bit in the area of Eisek A little bit in this Lois Eisek, which I was over, I'm a Kabbal a little bit to improve. I'll do certain things an hour a day, or a little bit more than I've been doing until now. In the Kiyo Mitzvah I say, I'll do a little bit. And then I'll come back in a few months, and I'll renew it, and I'll see where I'm holding. We come in Kippur like that, Zokta Chavetz Chaim. That the Eivish to Kabbal Yochel. That the Eivish to Kinsel, to Benzel Shalmai. That David Shuk could say, listen, he's striking up a deal. It sounds good. Let's see. Bezal Shalmaila can't say no, we're not masking. He has so many affairs from last year. Bezal Shalmaila is forced to agree. <laughs> if a person does an Emma's a chuva, the Ramam says, well, Vaiter, in Allah Kavov, Ata Pisha had chuva, Vatsa Oka, Yofala Oilo. Any time of the year a person does tshuva. Deep in the middle of the winter. Any time of the year a person does tshuva, it's yofa lo'ilam. It's, it's good to do tshuva and avada, it's mukubal. But ba'aser asayom, shemein rosh hashanah v'yom ekipurim, hi yofa b'yoyser. Those ten days, from rosh hashanah to yom kippur, zok der amam, it's yofa b'yoyser, it's accepted, it's, it's best to do it. Umiyad hi miskabelz. The Ramam says, umiyad he miscavels. Immediately, the two is accepted. The whole year, they look at it with spotlights and see if the person is really sincere. Is there anything behind it? <clears throat> Let's see what else he has on his plate. Let's see what else he has on his chart, in his file. Between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, it's not like that. Between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, Shtet HaPasuk, Dir Shu Hashem V'Himotsoi, look for HaKadosh Baruch when he's around. Kura'u B'Yoysoi Kara. Right now, especially going into Yom Kippur. The Abish is, is right here. During the year, the Abish stays in his city, sort of, and you got to go to the Melech. you got to creep to the city to get to the Melech, which is not so easy. Sometimes the Melech comes traveling through the villages, and all the citizens can stand on the side of the street and speak to the Melech. That's El to a certain degree, and more so is up the Rambam. Leading up to Yom Kippur, the Abish is here now, the Abish is waiting for us. So we have to call him, 
And the Rambam says that miyad in miskabels. That shuvah is mekubal immediately in these days when the Eved is so close to us. Bachin Yeshiva came over to me a couple years ago and told me a beautiful remez. We say in Asher Yotzar, E Efshali Skaye Vilaam Oidlifonet. It's impossible in the context of Asher Yotzar, obviously, if we wouldn't take care of our bodily functions, E Efshali Skaye Vilaam Oidlifonet, we wouldn't be able to have any existence. But the words are, E Efshali Skaye Vilaam Oidlifonet. Impossible. But if you take the words, Efshir, the Hiskaye, the Laamoid, the Fonefa, that spells out El. Efshir, the Hiskaye, the Laamoid, the Fonefa. The rest of the year, maybe it's Efshir, because the Efshir is not so close. Comes El, already in El. It's Efshir, the Hiskaye, the Laamoid, the Fonefa. It's possible to stand Mamish in front of Akash Borg. <laughs> begins in Chodesh El, and the Rambam says it continues and it gets closer and closer. It sounds like till Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur. So, if we can take the Chavot Chaim's advice and make a shtikel Chesh ben Alefish before Yom Kippur. Before we come into Kolidre, before we come in and start saying Hashem to Magad, to make a cheshbon, like the Archaim says, in the three key areas, in the area of Eisek Atayr, first and foremost, Talmud Torah can get cool up. Somebody that doesn't have a kviyas every single night, and it is possible for him for him to have that kviyas every single night. So going into Yom Kippur, he's makabel on himself. That starting from Yom Kippur, I'm makabel. Whatever I'm able to put in, if it's a half hour a day, that's a half hour a day. If I can push an hour, I push an hour. Even though some nights I didn't do it in the past. But now, I'm a kabbal on myself. If a person is a kabbal that, <coughs> and a serious kabbal, a little kabbal like we said from the Chavot Zchai, but he's a kabbal it seriously when he's going into Yom Kippur. So then he has a unbelievable haftok. The Pesach says, by Korban Pesach, after Moshe Rabbeinu told Klai Yisro all the halachas of Korban Pesach, and they were holding Yud Nisan, they were holding four days before Pesach, before the time for Akrovas Korban Pesach. Moshe Rabbeinu told them all the halachas, and the Pesach at the end of that parsha says, "Vayelchu vayasu bnei Yisrael kechol asher tzivu lehem Moshe." Vayelchu vayasu. They went and they did everything that Moshe Rabbeinu told them to do. That means the whole part of the Korban Pesach, how to shef the Korban Pesach. Frek Rashi, that didn't happen yet. For another four days, it didn't happen. Till you Yudal and Nisan, there's no shef the Korban Pesach. So how does the Pesach say, Vayelchu Vayasu? They went and they did. Kechol Asher Tzibol and Moshe, whatever Moshe Rabbeinu told them. So Rashi, if a person is makabal on himself to do a mitzvah, Ma'ala Allah Vakosuv Ke'ilu Oso. The Pesach considers it, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu considers it, Ke'ilu Aso, as if he did it. Now, for states, it can't be a scam. You can't say, okay, I'll say that I'm going to do it, and then I'm not going to do it. If a person makes an Ebez HaKabol, then he's going to do the mitzvah, and he's going to do the mitzvah. So he gets the credit, he gets the cheshbin, he gets the schar, that he did that mitzvah, he gets it even before he did it. If not, then he ends up doing it. And if he's an oinus and couldn't do it because of an oinus, he still gets the schar. But when he decides that he's going to do the mitzvah with the Kabbalah, as long as it's a serious Kabbalah, Vayelchu Vayasu, the Pesach tells us, Ma'alel of Akosu Ki'ilu Asoy. So if we go into Yom Kippur and we have a Kabbalah, that Asa uh, Katayr, I'm going to try and do a little bit better than Asa Katayr. Like the Archive speaks out, the three prongs, stay away from Oisa says, and the Kiyam Asay is the way he touched up the Pesukim and Pasha Zayinah. And you go into Yom Kippur with a serious Kabbalah. So then, all of that, which will talk and come to fruition throughout the year, is already on the cheshbon of Yom Kippur. And then it comes, <laughs> the Ebesha shows, Ben Zeshom Maila. Look, it's chusim. Way, way outweighing the other tzad. And Mitzvah Shem like that, we're guaranteed to be sealed with a gemach at the